Hello everybody, my name is Christy Long, and today we're going to talk about how to install and upgrade a Nexus 9K switch. On the screen, you'll see a flowchart created by Cisco. The entire process follows these guidelines. Today, we're going to use a program called PuTTY to help us connect to the serial port on the switch. As you can see, when PuTTY starts up, it defaults to COM1. Many times, you're actually going to have to change that to COM4 to be able to see your command line on your computer. Once you hit open, the command line is now displayed on your screen. It's asking you if you want to continue with the normal setup. This lets you know the device has never been configured before. Go ahead and select Y for yes, then press enter. You will then be prompted for your password. You will not see any characters on your screen as you type the password. Now hit Y to begin the basic configuration. The next steps we'll come to will vary based on your organization's requirements. If you need another username, go ahead and type Y and select Enter. If not, just press Enter for the default no answer. I'm going to select no for the next two questions and name my switch Nexus 1. This brings us to the out-of-band management. I want to enable this because this allows us to reach our switch, even if the network is down. Go ahead and enter in your default gateway. Now we can configure our advanced IP options. There are several available, I've only chosen to configure a few of them. Since this switch is in a test environment, I was able to use Telnet services. If this was a production environment, I would disable Telnet services and only use SSH for security reasons. Our last important protocol is the network time protocol. This will allow the time on the switch and applications to sync up. Now we are given a screen to verify our selections and confirm they are correct. At this point, the settings are being saved and applied. We have completed the initial installation now let's confirm what software is running on our switch. With the show version command, we were able to see what image is in the boot flash. You can see on the screen the N9000. This means that the switch is in NXOS mode. If the letters ACI preceded the N9000, we would be in ACI mode. Uh, this is exactly what we're looking for. Now we need to check which version of NXOS mode we're running. This will allow us to ensure the code is up to date and compatible with ACI mode. In order to use the management port to complete the upgrade, the VRF route must exist. If you don't know what to put, go ahead and put IP route 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, slash 0 space your default gateway. Okay, now it's time to copy the image to the switch. I used file transfer protocol to bring the image from a server but you can use X modem, a USB, or any other transport protocol that your network uses. The source file name contains the path location and the file name of the image. Earlier we configured the VRF route so that we could transport data over the management port. So let's go ahead and type management. Here's the IP address for the FTP server that I'm going to use. The last step of initiating the transfer of the image is entering the username and password of the FTP server. Now that the image has downloaded, let's go ahead and install it. The 
the switch needs to reboot, go ahead and select Yes to continue the installation. Now that the switch has finished rebooting, we'll go ahead and log back in. Once we are logged in, we'll go ahead and type the command show version and verify the image has installed. I would like to send a special thanks to Sean and Scott for all their help during the production of this video.